Hey Grace, we are excited to offer to you something a little different than what we have been doing during the midweek. We're calling this series Candid Conversations, where Matthew and I take some time and interview some amazing leaders about the current epidemic that we find ourselves in. We're going to address some hot topics of COVID-19, some uh, questions we're going to do our best to answer. We brought in some big guns that are way smarter than us, <laughs> have some wisdom, and so I think you will enjoy and be encouraged and informed with these conversations. Watch these candid conversations. Well, hello. Welcome to another candid conversation with Matthew and Sabrina and some of our dear friends, Caleb and Alyssa Mooney. Welcome, who are joining you guys. Us. Caleb and Ooh, Alyssa, it's good to have you guys here. <laughs> thank you so much for having us. Great Caleb and Alyssa, they uh, are the founders and overseers of HoopNet. I believe it's International Ministries. Is that correct? Well, you're or, saying it like a white gringo, but they can <laughs> tell us. No, hold on. A white gringo would say Juvenet. That's with true. Okay. So you're, so you're, I was half, close. you're halfway there. <laughs> tell us how it's really said, you guys. The Juvenet Internacional. There we go. I was close. You're not even going to try. Right. Okay. I was close. So, hey, you guys, thank you for being here with us. We're excited to hear what's going on in your world and how you have made some uh, significant adjustments to do uh, missions and oversee the work that is taking place throughout uh, Central America. You guys are an incredible yeah. couple. Sabrina, I, we've known you now for how many years? Oh. Quite a while. Uh, over yeah, over a about... decade, for sure. Yeah, since 2005. Five. 2005. Yeah, we, we were able to take a trip down to Guatemala, and you guys hosted us. And yeah. Did we do yeah. a couple? I can't. I, I can't keep track. I feel like we did. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. We're it's overdue. Okay. Is, is really yeah, we so are much. overdue. <laughs> Tell us real quick. Give us kind of a highlight. What is Juvenet? International. <laughs> <laughs> What's that all about? Give give our listeners for those that don't know you and haven't heard what you guys are up absolutely. to. What what are you guys involved with? Yeah, absolutely. So Juvenet is you know, started. We started in two thousand six. Um, my wife and I were pastoring a church in Guatemala, in Chimaltenango, Guatemala. Um, we had been pastoring about five years, and just in a moment of prayer, the Lord just led us to just burdened our heart. We felt led to reach out to the next generation. And we felt like God was doing something incredible, wanting to rise up young people, leaders. Um, and so as we prayed, it, you know, just God began to confirm. And in 2006, we had about eight youth pastors in Guatemala. And together, we just started asking the Lord, how can we reach? How can we equip? And how can we mobilize the next generation for the kingdom of God and started, um, you know, just with a blank piece of paper and just started building together. And that grew and grew and grew into a model in Guatemala. Um, we, help, we helped oversee about 80 youth pastors there. And then in 2008, it grew into the surrounding countries um, and now has grown, you know, into we're in 11 countries and helping oversee the youth area and churches, about 700 churches in those countries. And just with the vision to, you know, come alongside and support the local church. How can we reach young people? How can we train and mobilize, inspire them to do, you know, just live in their full capacity and their dreams. And, and, um, and so, yeah, we've been doing that now since then. So that would have been about 14 years and, and, uh, that's a little bit about who Vanette in a nutshell. <laughs> that's, some, that's some pretty incredible rapid growth that you guys have seen, starting with a handful. I love that yeah. story because you guys yeah. just being faithful with the half dozen that you had and how yeah. amazingly that's grown. And you guys, you said you're in 11 different nations right now. Is that correct? Country. Absolutely. Country. Yeah. It's, it's grown and covering from, you know, Houston in the U.S. We have several churches we help there, Mexico, all of Central America and a few countries in South America. And ultimately the vision is to build a national team in each country of Latin America and come alongside the local church and serve. And then you guys also, you are frequently taking teams from America down there as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as Juvenet began to grow our, our partners and churches, just like Grace, were like, hey, we want to know on what y'all are doing. What's going on down there? And so we just kind of, in essence, rolled out the red carpet. And we wanted to create easy on-ramps 
uh, for churches such as yours to get down on the field. Um, but we wanted to do it in such a way where it was a support system to the local church in those countries as well. And so everything our teams do is through the local church there. And so in essence, you know, our, our teams come down and we, our, our goal is to make God famous and that pastor famous. Um, so we'll do evangelism in the city. We'll build homes for widows and single moms rescued out of abuse. Uh, we'll get in the schools yeah. and uh, schools will open up to us and whole student bodies. And I mean, God will pour out his spirit. We've seen miracles. We've seen gang members get saved. Um, uh, we've seen, uh, principals decide to cancel classes for the rest of the day mm -hmm. and let us minister to their students, yeah. um, powerful times of ministry there. Um, we do, uh, food distributions as well, where, um, a local pastor will, he just, you know, no one has the pulse of the needs of his community like a local pastor does. And so the local pastor will make us aware of families that are genuinely in need in his village. And so our team will come with bags of food that will feed those families for two weeks. And we will go door to door, up mountains, through hills, through valleys <laughs> to get to them. And the pastors and their elders will go with us. And it's just a powerful time of ministering to those people right where they're at. And we've seen so many salvations yeah. um, and miracles through that. So yeah, we, we love, love host and mission teams. It's one of our favorite things to do. We have been on one of those missions teams. And what I loved most about it was it was seven days long and everything you mentioned, we got to be a part of. Yeah. Like it wasn't like, oh, this one missions trip, we're just going to build a house or we're just going to minister in schools or we're mm -hmm. just going to deliver food out in the highways and byways of the back yeah. country of Guatemala. <laughs> we did all of that. And yeah. you guys really do offer a full a full meal deal. <laughs> we pack it in for sure. Yeah. But we work exactly. hard and we play hard. We, we did play the hard. Lake. Did you guys do the lake or did we, did we, we go did, on a boat? Yeah, we did the volcano lake. Oh yeah. The, um, <laughs> zip lining. The zip line. We did do the zip lining, didn't we? <laughs> we Come on, sure how did. good is that? Go on a mission for <laughs> three people to Jesus, zip down a volcano. Yes. Well, hey, you guys, yeah. um, I think for those of us that are tuning in today and watching this are, are mostly the North American region and specifically Southern California, yeah. um, the majority of people that are watching. And I think it's easy for us to just kind of get locked into this is how COVID-19 has been impacting us in our world, Hello. in our city, in our family, in our church, in our bubble. And one of the reasons we wanted to interview you guys was to help us kind of see a little bit outside of our worldview. How mm -hmm. has yeah. and how has COVID-19 impacted Hoovenet? And yeah. what do you see globally, especially in Central America and where you guys are and have your feet on the ground? How do you see it happening, working? How is the country outside of Southern California? Yeah. <laughs> third world countries yeah. give us a little insight into that that's a great question yeah so Juvenet, actually i was in colombia uh hosting a mission team from florida when uh covid19 just hit obviously all the brakes were thrown on airports started closing borders started closing and actually we got our team out uh before our trip was supposed to end and two days later the trip you know, the borders, the borders were closed wow. and, you know, we, we got everybody home. But since then, you know, we, you, I've been home um, and, and there's no, been no travel. So for Hoovenet specifically, we, you know, we had about 22 teams, mission teams planned for this year. And that's been completely postponed probably till 2021, Lord willing. And, you know, and we're navigating that water and then, um, we had a, an internship program planned for this summer, which we also had to push back and seven interns coming down to train to be missionaries. And so, you know, that's, that was a really hard thing for us. And, and so uh, as we just began to pray about what do we do, what does it look like for us? Obviously we oversee the help oversee the network of churches throughout Latin America. And we, we decided we are going to plug into that a hundred percent, you know, focus all of our attention on, how can we walk, help walk these churches through this season? Mm -hmm. Churches that, you know, as well as like here in the States, we closed down. But with the difference is, you know, mm -hmm. tremendous lack of technology, no online giving, 
yeah. you know, none of those platforms for the churches. Um, and so we began to just pray, God, how can we help these churches? How can we help families? And so we rallied as our national teams began to see the need. I mean, we're talking like now, we're there at the height of the moment throughout Latin America. Um, and, and we have families that the way they express their need is they, they can't go out, they can't be about. And so, you know, they're putting white flags out of their windows, red flags out of their windows saying, we have no food. Yeah. And literally throughout all the countries um, with churches being closed and, and work being closed, the reality is we're seeing, you know, countries that were already on the verge of poverty and making it, you know, day to day. Now it's, it's shot them into extreme need and now to the point of starvation. And so we immediately just began to knock on our, on the door of all of our partners and friends and say, Hey, this is happening. It's a tremendous need. What can we do? Part, let's partner together. And so we've been working on raising funds, sending them down, to our national teams mm -hmm. and they've been going door to door where the red flags are where the white flags are and putting food on on those families and so we've been able to help close to a thousand families now mm -hmm. feed them for two weeks and also churches that are on the brink of losing their buildings because they don't they can't pay the rent or the lease we're coming around them rallying around the pastor and their families and helping them you know keep their buildings helping mm -hmm. them and, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, we sent down finances for seven churches in, in Guatemala, and we're about to do that to Colombia. And so um, extreme need, honestly, and, yeah. and as, as an organization trying to rise up and meet that need in a very real way. Yeah, and 15 years of ministry, we have never used the word starvation. We've seen a lot of need, and we've expressed that, but sometimes the word starvation can be overused to and a bit dramatic to create an emotional response. Um, we have never used that word as a ministry until right now. Mm -hmm. um, it is, it's like nothing we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And it's very different in each country um, because you have different restrictions, you know, in, in like Colombia and El Salvador, their restrictions are so strict that um, they've organized it to where you cannot leave your home unless it's your specific day. And they have the entire population divided up and organized by your social security number. And the last it. number. So the last numbers of your social security number dictates what day you can leave your home. Other than that, you are completely bound to your home. If in fact you're able to continue working, you have to get a special work permit and keep that on your person at all times. Some of our pastors have been able to get special permission to go out on other days so that they can um, get food to the, to the families. And, and like what he was saying, you know, the white fabric or t-shirt or bag hanging out the window, you know, signifies that they have officially completely run out of food. And it's such a, 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 a signal of desperation because that's, you know, and my husband and I are talking about it and he's, he's like the man, the provider, you know, and, and even at moments where we're in need, that's not really something we would want to like publicly announce to the whole neighborhood and our friends to see they're that desperate at this point where they are willing to risk embarrassment to their whole community and neighborhoods and say, we are completely out of food. Yeah. And, um, but we could not be prouder of our pastors. I mean, they have not stayed behind closed doors. They have not moved in fear. They've been respectful of the law, but they've also raised their voices and said, hey, like our people need us. You need to let us get to our people. And they have been out, yeah. you guys, every day, mm. hot, rain, it doesn't matter. I mean, on foot, because there's no public transportation. So we're talking, they're walking, carrying these heavy bags or on bicycles and they're getting, you know, to the, to the neediest of people, you know, and, um, yeah. it's a lot, but, uh, God is moving. People are getting saved through this, um, families, uh, in Guatemala, uh, we got one report last week. There was, oh goodness, I'm going to forget the exact number, but there, I want to say 11 families that had never heard the gospel message of Jesus before well, we're able to hear the message of Jesus and the hope of salvation 
and ended up giving their lives to the Lord through a bag of food and a pastor showing up on their door. I love that so much. It's amazing how we can, when we minister to the need, we actually get to minister to the spirit and the soul. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So a bag of food for an American, a North American is probably a lot different (laughs) than what a bag of food in Guatemala or Central America looks like. Can you break that down even by cost? Just yeah. I think our money goes a lot different and it'd be great for our people to say, Oh, I could, I could actually be a part of helping yeah. someone not starve. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we've actually, it's, it's amazing. We, we broke it down. So a bag of food, what we've noticed is it's lasting a family about two weeks and it has essential, you know, the essentials in it, rice, beans, oil, the things that they need to, to just be healthy and to, to survive and, and to fill up. And that the bag of food down there is going for about $75 for that two weeks worth of groceries mm-hmm. for that family. And so, um, people in the family does that feed? It, most of the families average between five people to, you know, five to eight people more or less is the sizes of the wow. families. And sometimes mm-hmm. you have a couple of family units sharing a home. It's very, very common mm-hmm. in, in Latin America. And so we will each individual family unit will get a bag of food. And it depends per country, the cost, but that's essentially it. And they come with toilet paper. Yes. $75 <laughs> to feed a family for two weeks. Yeah. yeah. That's phenomenal. Tell you what, $75 would not go very far at Costco. No. <laughs> no. no. Not on no, my bill today. Not anywhere you know, and Exactly. And, you know, to help keep the churches open and, like, feed the pastoral family and keep the churches open, on average, we're seeing that it's about $300 to be able to pay the rent, keep, get the bills paid for that church, feed the family, and so they can, you know, keep going for another month. And so right now we have about 24 churches that are on the, the brink of, like, just need and, and help and needing help. And so for for like, yeah, just for $300 that we can help keep those churches open. So it is, it is a lot what we can do. I mean, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. well, wow. I think that's incredible what you guys are doing. It's amazing to see not just locally within the context of our community, but the, the church at large in this hour through creativity and ingenuity and kind of being pushed out of the nest in many ways has had to get creative in, yeah. Oh, yeah. in meeting needs. And you guys are experiencing what it's like to pivot and have COVID-19 just puke all over your plans for the year and <laughs> <laughs> some more than others. But yeah, I was use another word, but that was more, that was better. That was, just that was real. Version. We felt it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it hard. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure you guys like Sabrina and I, we went to 2020 like, man, we got vision. And <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, oh, like, yeah. It was your 2020 vision and man around the corner, we get smacked in the face. Yeah. And you guys, you know, having the rest of your year calendar just wiped out for a lot of churches yeah. in America, they're going to be picking up the pace even in these next few weeks, but you guys are going to be feeling the aftermath. In a unique yeah. way for some time. I love yeah. to see that you guys are you're using this as an opportunity to uh, continue to meet needs and yeah. be the hand yeah. of Jesus. And I think the church at large is doing a great job at that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's interesting just to hear what's happening in the, the countries that you are a part of, because obviously the the needs are different and seem to be greater. Whereas we've got an Albertsons down the store, and yeah, the shelves might have been a little bare for a while, but it's different than people throwing a white rag of surrender and desperation out there saying, my family's not going to make it if I don't get help. And I think it's a great opportunity for the American church uh, to step up and help you guys. Uh, For those that are watching, Caleb and Alyssa, they've been a part of Grace International for a number of years. Which is our organization that our church is a part of. The Fellowship of Churches. And we have, I think we have some of the best, highest quality, uh, trustworthy and faithful missionaries that are part of Grace International that have been vetted, that have uh, demonstrated that they are good stewards of the resource that they are receiving. Mm. And most of them aren't just missionaries, they're leaders of leaders. And that's how you see Caleb and Alyssa is they are leaders of multitudes Mm -hmm. and how we want to get behind that. Yeah, I think it's great. We, We actually just last week talked so much at our church about how we're blessed to be a blessing. I think this is a 
great example of what that means that even in our hardship and for many here there's an economic downturn but we still most of us have some sort of surplus and can do mm -hmm. something even in our need to help and i just want as a church to get behind what you guys are doing and yeah. uh, sabrina and i we have seen with our own eyes the fruit of your ministry we know you mm -hmm. and vouch for the faithfulness of what you guys are doing i just think it'd be great for grace and those that are watching to rally behind and say hey we can we may not be able to do much but maybe we can help a family maybe we can help Absolutely. a church yeah. maybe we can help a number of churches in the city. I don't know what we can do, but man, mm. if three hundred dollars could help a church survive this month, that's that's an incredible investment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if seventy five yeah. bucks can get a family to <laughs> thrive for the next couple of weeks, man, that's amazing. So, can, can we just take a few moments and talk yeah. about how we can organize this? Because what I'd like to do is rally people to uh, to give towards missions here and specifically Hoovnet missions and what what you guys are doing to help uh, sow into <laughs> the countries of Central America. So we, we one of the benefits of giving towards Grace International Ministries also, I want to note this, that when someone gives towards Grace Missions, every penny on the dollar actually makes it to the missionary. There's, there's no middleman. There's no right. administrative right. fee. There's not like the church takes the cut. It's just everything goes directly to the mission field, which is actually really rare for yeah. most missions yeah, and outreach organizations. And so it's every penny on Very the dollar true. makes it to those families, those churches on that foreign soil. And yeah. so I'd like to just take a moment. Sabrina can give some of the yeah. details and you guys can talk about how we can partner together and yeah. Connected. Yeah. Well, you'll see on our lower third, um, just the link to use, uh, you're going to go to gracesd.tv backslash give, and there's going to be a pull down option for you to give to Hoovenet relief fund. And uh, whether you can give $10, whether you can sponsor a few families at $75, whether you can sponsor a pastor and church to keep their doors open at $300, or maybe you can just do a whole lot more. Every dollar counts. Every dollar yeah. matters. Um, let's, let's be generous, Grace Church and people of North County, San Diego, who are watching this. We've been doing a good job of taking care of our own here. We've been providing, we've been having generous times where people come and donate and contribute and we've been able to distribute, but let's take it outside of our four walls and really love on another nation and other people who are far more desperate than us. What a great time to be a part of this. Yeah, I love that, Sabrina. You know, and I, for us, as we've watched over this last month, it's been amazing to see just the church here in the U.S. rise up. Yeah. to serve the global church and to help people that are in tremendous need and and give sacrificially you know and it's it has really rocked us to see um just the heart that people have towards the world and towards what's going on around the world it's been it's been incredible to witness that firsthand the church rise up and be such a blessing so yeah. thank you all absolutely and when you see such tremendous need it's easy to kind of be overwhelmed and like whoa like what can i do it's so big you know but what we've just had to remind ourselves every day and we recruit and encourage those watching is we can't help everyone we'll never be able to do that we can't help everyone but everyone can help someone yeah. good and 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 it's it makes a difference it, it all adds up it makes a difference I love that. We're excited to be a part in that. And uh, just for reference, Sabrina mentioned how people can give and that link will have showed up and we'll put that up there again. How can people connect with you, Caleb and Alyssa, to see what you guys are up to, what's happening Following along through your ministry? Media. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So we have a few platforms. Uh, we have our website, whovenet.org, and um, people can see there uh, what we are, what we're doing, and there's a platform there that you can give to. And then on social media, we have our Facebook, Whovenet International page, also Instagram, Whovenet, Whovenet Missions as well and you can follow along and see what we're doing day to day um you'll get to see what your finances and resources are going to it's happening right now and and the difference that that's making yeah it's especially the the Huvenet missions is in english so yeah. our english speaking 
That'll help us out. <laughs> Participants. <laughs> Go to Hoobinette Missions on Facebook or Instagram. And we are constantly daily uploading stuff that pastors, information and stories that pastors are sending us from, uh, well, now we have nine distribution points in seven different countries for COVID relief. Yeah. Um, and so we're constantly uploading stuff. So join in the fun there. We thank will. You. That's so good. You guys, thank you for doing what you're doing. Uh, thank you for your time today. We look forward to uh, seeing how this moves forward. And honestly, we look forward to taking a trip down yeah, to one of the do. countries you're in. And hopefully that will be sooner than later. We were hoping to get one in for 2020, but I know. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll just put a rain check on that and plan for later. Hey, can we take a moment and just pray for you guys and Hoovnet? Is that all right? That'd be great. Thank Lord, you. we thank you for what you're doing in the midst of crisis, you are, Jesus, you are being exalted. You are making the most of this and working things together for good and for your glory. Lord, we thank you for Caleb and Alyssa and all the leaders that they oversee. And I just pray that the hand of God would continue to move them and direct them, Lord, and that you would you'd provide for them every need that is in front of them for their ministry, Lord, for their family, God, for opportunities. Jesus, that you would, as, as we move through these months and even the rest of this year, where, where things seem to have dismantled and fallen apart, Lord, I pray that as we get to the other side, we'd look back and see, God, that you have done far more than mm -hmm. we would ever have imagined you could do, yes, God, that you Lord. would demonstrate your faithfulness, your goodness, your sovereignty, and your power. Lord, we mm -hmm. thank you for Hoovnet and all the lives that are going to be yes, touched. God. Lord, thank you for letting us be a part of this incredible ministry in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Guys, we Amen. love you. We love you. You guys are awesome. We really love you all. Thank you.